Hi, this is John with Performance Plus Tennis. In today's lesson, I'm gonna cover the high contact on the forehand. And this was a request that came in from one of our uh, loyal YouTube subscribers about high contacts and how to play them. And for many club level players, the high contact is a complicated shot and many of you try to avoid it. But the way the game has evolved with spin and speed, many of us are playing high contacts more than ever. In today's lesson, I'm gonna show you how to play the high contact like a pro and also show you what to do with that shot from different parts of the court. Step number one, make sure that you have the appropriate grip to play the forehand with a lot of versatility. And that means you nearly need to be in the range of correctness. So double check what your grip is. The ideal grip for the modern forehand is gonna be somewhere between an Eastern grip where my index finger knuckle is on bevel number three, one, two, three, or a semi-Western grip where the index finger knuckle is on bevel number four. Both of these grips, or anywhere between these two grips, will give you the versatility to play the forehand with a variety of different spins and different heights of contact. So to be more specific, when you look at the graphic here, you'll see that the number one is on the top of the handle, number two is the, is the 45 degree bevel, and number three is the back. An eastern grip is going to have your index finger knuckle and your palm on the back of the handle. That's a true eastern forehand grip. And if we went to a semi-Western grip, then that index finger knuckle would slide to the fourth position, which is the 45 degree angle underneath. And this is also an excellent grip for hitting topspin forehands and high contacts. Step number two is understanding the appropriate stance that allows you to play the high contact forehand comfortably and naturally with power. And it's much more difficult to hit a high contact from what would be considered a classic neutral or square stance on the forehand. Once you're turned sideways here and the ball's high, it's very difficult to rotate the whole unit back to the ball. So what ends up happening is we get trapped. And you see players, club level players, we do this all the time. We get trapped in a position where we can't rotate and we just the, the swing just gets shut down. So how do we solve that? We solve that by playing the high contact forehand with a semi-open or open stance. And in that case, my feet are a little bit open and now I can rotate my shoulders back beyond my hips. And now I'm loaded up on the, on the outside leg of the back leg and from here, I can push with that leg and I can rotate my shoulders back to join my hips to make contact. So I've got nice torque in my torso here. I push and rotate and that makes it so easy to make a free swing versus a closed or square stance on the forehand. And step number three is knowing where the contact point is for the high contact. And really we have three distinct contact points on the forehand for low, medium, and high. And from the back view, if I go to a medium contact, you can see I'm here, but if I went straight up above this to play a high contact, you could see that I would be in a cramped position. I don't have any, I don't have any power to play the shot. Now I'm trapped in my swing. So contact has to be further away. And if we just think of a radius point being your shoulder, you can see that as I get up to shoulder high, naturally the hand is gonna get further away from the body. And so if I put my hand out further away, but in a comfortable position, and put the racket out there, there's my contact. It's gonna be an arm's length and a racket's length to the sweet spot away from your shoulder. See that? And there's the ideal contact point. It's out in a way, okay? Out and away from you. Okay. Another key part of the contact is when you go to it, you don't want the racket to be locked up above your hand. You want to actually have a hand and a, and a forearm that rotates back and is soft so the racket feels like it's level with the hand or slightly below. Okay. This is a much more powerful position to generate a swing with than, say, a position like this where I'd just be locked up and pushing. So for me, I think of it this way. My hand comes out, just turn the thumb so it's down, so your hand is down. Put the racket in your hand, and the racket's now floating in my hand, and I can come right up to contact very comfortably. And that's the ideal range and position of the wrist for contact. If you're enjoying today's video, be sure to click on the link in the description down below and gain access to my five key principles on how to play a professional quality forehand. And step number four is the setup. So when you anticipate that you're gonna be playing a high contact, I want you to lift the whole system of your preparation up higher so that your swing is going to match the level of your contact. As an example, it wouldn't make any sense to be here if the ball is gonna be played up here and then try to come from underneath. You wanna get up into that area where the contact's gonna be so your swing to the ball is gonna match the same swing pattern for different heights as well. So if the ball were lower, I'd probably bring my racket down a little lower. I wouldn't lift it way up here for a low ball. I'd match that low contact. 
medium I lift a little higher to match and then the high one I'm going to lift the hands a little higher and that's going to enable you to really play through the ball with a similar feeling that you would have for the medium and the low contacts as well. And step number five is understanding the swing pattern that's going to naturally take place after contact. And there's a little bit of confusion here as well and because we're thinking it's a high contact we're thinking high finish. So we see a lot of players that'll come up and they'll play the high contact and then they'll keep going up. So they finish very high. But the reality is there's nothing up there after contact and there's no power you can deliver through contact with the attention of going up. So on the high contact forehand, you're gonna come up to the ball, out to the contact and around and you're gonna finish off the shoulder. So you'll notice that this swing is starting to take on the form of an, what we call angular. It's low to high, but it's also circular in nature. It's low to high, but circular in nature. And by contrast, of the linear stroke that we've seen, and some of the coaches on, on YouTube are still teaching linear strokes, where the forehand looks like this, and goes up, up, and the swing just goes straight to the target. That swing pattern will not lend itself to these different high contacts and these contact points. You cannot go from underneath and go up to contact and go up on a linear path up to contact because the face will be open. So the problem with that is that in the olden days, linear was a little bit more popular. It was taught, ball stayed lower, okay? Modern game, strings that grab the ball more, spin the ball more. We're playing more and more contacts that are up over the waist into the chest and shoulder level. Thus came along angular strokes, particularly on the forehand, meaning it's a circular pattern that's low to high. So make sure that you're not doing the, the linear pattern where you're just going up, 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 because there's really nothing there. There's no power, there's nothing there. There could be some spin, but it's gonna be very difficult to hit that ball with any kind of professional flair. So the ideal swing path is gonna be from below the ball slightly, up to the ball, and you're gonna keep the racket moving up and around, and then it will finish off the shoulder. And as a bonus tip, now that you have the key principles on how to play the high contact technically, I'm going to give you a couple of options on how to play the ball from a tactical perspective. First, I'm going to get a ball that's deep behind the baseline. In this case, I'm going to keep the ball away from the net. I'm going to take the net out of play by aiming this ball three nets high. And then I'm going to get a mid-court ball and I'm going to pursue that ball, play a high contact to take the net out of play, but I'm going to attack this ball and try to make a kill shot out of it. Thanks so much for watching today's lesson, and I hope you'll take these concepts of the court and build your high contact forehand into a professional quality weapon. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe to the channel, and remember to click on the link in the description down below to gain access to my free course, mini course on the forehand, which teaches you the five essential principles that you need to have to develop a professional quality forehand. Thanks again for watching today's lesson, and we'll see you in the next video.